clear. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Dr. PPR. I'm your host, Henry Markin. Again, that's Dr. PPR, not Dr. Pepper. And by God, certainly not Dr. PP. That would be a very different show with a very different doctor. I'm Dr. PPR, as in points per reception, and I specialize in fantasy football healthcare, doing anything I can to help your ailing fantasy football lineups or any sort of recovery or preventive care. If you're never ailing and you're only winning, you refer to me to, you know, maintain that clean bill of health. Uh, Today's date is September 6th, Wednesday, the day before the NFL season officially kicks off. And this is I mean, I I can't say this enough. This is the best time of the year. I think this is the best time of the year. Drafts are done. I'm assuming that all fantasy football drafts are done, unless, of course, you live your life on the edge and you're the kind of guy that whips up a peanut butter jelly and Vicodin sandwich just to feel something. I mean, if you're going to take this down the wire and have a draft right before kickoff, good God, God bless you. Um, That's beyond me and my medical science knowledge. That's, That's a higher power. Uh, But yeah, for the most part, drafts are done and shit has been happening. My office, it's a revolving door right now. I mean, it's always, it's the same thing every year. Somebody big gets hurt right before the season starts, usually right around the time people are drafting. This is the craziest situation though, where a big name player gets hurt right before the first game, like the the season opener. Yes, I'm talking about Travis Kelsey. So some people have had their drafts for over three weeks now. Some people are fucking hardos and have their drafts in late July. And so stupid. I mean, that's just bad parenting. That's like letting your kids play peewee football at like age four. And then by like age 20, they're like, why is my kid drooling? Why is he in algebra? He's in college. Like go figure. Uh, I can't control you. I, I, I can't say when to have your draft. I can only give you my best advice is, you know, as close as the season starts without making it really stressful. So Labor Day weekend is usually when I advise my patients to do a draft, but that's beyond me. What is not beyond you is listening to my advice. Now, I understand when you visit your actual doctor, right? And you lie through your teeth for this question. How many drinks a week do you consume? We both know you just closed down the bar over the weekend, housing four Vegas bombs, right? What do you tell the doctor? Drink a little bit. Do I smoke? God, no. Just ash went out in the car right over here, but no, I don't smoke shit, right? You lie to your doctor and that's fine. It's it's your life. You're probably going to die sooner, but you're only hurting yourself. You don't need to lie to your doctor. You don't need to lie to me, right? So it's a, if you don't want to take my advice, don't take, don't take the advice, right? Like live your life, enjoy your fantasy football freedom, do with it what you will. However, it would be very stupid to do that as I am a doctor. You can trust the doctor. You should trust your doctor. If you want to live longer and have a better life, you should trust your doctor. You should also trust the fact that I know a little bit what I'm talking about, because you probably would have remembered that last week before people's drafts. I mentioned this big prescription and I'll call it a prescription. It wasn't an order because you don't know me. I just suggested you take this, but you get in these episodes and you get in my cadence and my regular doctor plan. You understand the difference between a prescription and an order. So the prescription I said is if there are any of these six running backs, mm, McCaffrey, Eckler, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley and Tony Pollard and Nick Chubb. Any one of those six are on the board. You have to take them before anybody else, unless that person's name is Justin Jefferson. That was what I said. If any of those six running backs are on the board, you cannot take a skill position player unless his name is Justin Jefferson. That is exactly what I said. And you could have sat there and listened or smiled through your teeth and nodded as, you know, most people do when their doctors say, let's limit ourselves to a couple of drinks a week and go tell the doctor to pound salt. But here we are now. And if you drafted Travis Kelsey, oh boy, do you have a problem on your hands? 
what do you do? You acted out of line. You didn't follow my advice. And you left one of the six elite running backs on the board. And now you are fucked. You're stuck with a tight end who is probably not going to play a day before the season opener. What do you do? Well, guess what? Luckily for you, I'm a doctor. And I have a ton of solutions. Is it A, do we let this thing ride out? Do we go down with the ship? He's your first overall pick, of course. Do we do that? Do we say goodbye to someone you just drafted to make room? Well, I'll tell you. Don't worry, folks. I am a doctor. I'm here to help. And I will help you get through this. Now, let's say that you drafted Kelsey despite my best wishes. It's fine. It's okay. We're going to recover together. There's a lot you can do. A lot you can do. Uh, It starts with, yes, saying goodbye to some squid receiver you got in the 12th round, barely at all. I mean, it was like this close from being an auto pit pick. You, You drafted Adam Thielen because you're recognizing. You didn't recognize the other rookies and guys that barely made it off the practice squad. That's why you got him. Say goodbye to that pick drop them and make room so that you can have someone to replace Kelsey with. Kelsey's probably not going to play. Doesn't look like the situation is terminal, right? The knee is still intact. He didn't tear any ACLs or any ligaments, but this is going to be a lingering issue. He's probably going to miss week one, anticipate that he'll miss week one and have a replacement ready. Also keep in mind the replacement should probably be ready for week two and week three, just to be safe. The chiefs are playing for a super bowl. They're not going to, try to get every single game just because they want to help you win your fantasy league. They don't give a fuck about your fantasy team. I do. So get a replacement ready to replace Kelsey for up to three weeks is my advice. And there are three great options. If you're still listening to this, here are the options. If you're listening on social media, you got to listen to the podcast. Here are the options. Okay. Had to get that out of the way. Option one, Greg Dulkich. I love this guy. I, the Denver tight end, I think, is your best play to replace Kelsey immediately. The, the guy is not new to Russell Wilson's antics. And in fact, Russell Wilson is quite fond of this dude. The Denver Broncos are also going to be a pretty good offense, I think. I said that last year. I know it was a stupid-ass thing to assume at the beginning of the year, and they turned out to be the laughing stock of the league. I get that. That was an example of malpractice. I am fully aware I was wrong about Denver last year, but I think this is a very different team. The mindsets are different. Expect to bounce back in Denver. Are they going to go to the Super Bowl? I don't know. I don't think so. Probably not, but they're definitely going to be better than last year. And I think that Greg Dolkich is going to get a lot of touches. He's a great replacement. Another replacement gets some Monday night action, Tyler Conklin, New York Jets. Listen, I, I, I don't really know how successful Rodgers will be in the Jets in terms of what they view as success. I mean, they're trying to win a Super Bowl. It's literally a boomer bust year for those guys. I can't think of a more highly anticipated season than this Jets team right now. This has to be the most anticipated team in the history of football. I can't say who's going to do what on that team. I just know that they have huge aspirations. So why not pick up their tight end, huh? Playing Monday night against the Bills. This is a very big boomer bust play. Uh, I think if Dolkic isn't there, maybe Conklin would be a great pick. At least you get to have someone in that game. More more excitement as the as the weekends. And you know, it's always fun to have somebody on Monday night. It gives you something to feel, right? I mean, that's that's the reason we gamble at all. We're not gambling to be rich. We're not playing fuss, we're not playing fantasy football to be rich. We're doing it to feel something so that our Mondays and Sundays aren't completely hell. Like when I'm in and out of the operating room, fantasy football is an escape so I can feel something as I'm doing a triple bypass heart surgery because I don't feel anything doing that. It's all business for me, Dr. PPR. Sorry, if you're looking at the wall behind me, there is no degree that is that is coming. The status of that degree is TBD. It's still being printed out, as I say, but hey, neither here nor there. Uh, finally, the last suitable replacement for Kelsey is a gentleman out of the university of Iowa. That is right. He's a rookie, Sam Laporta. He is suiting up with the lions Thursday night for the first time. Huge boomer bus player. I think he could be a pretty decent addition to this offense. I think the lions are going to be really explosive. Um, 
I don't know who Goff likes the most other than St. Brown. I think that's the clear favorite, the winner of the receptions clubhouse, definitely. But they lost Hawkinson. Hawkinson was one of Goff's guys. He's now a Viking. Titans are important. And the Lions want to beat the Chiefs. They're going to get the whole receiving tree open. So Dolkich, Conklin, Laporta. Laporta is also, by the way, maybe the second coming of George Kittle. I know that's like super cheesy to say, considering that they both went to Iowa. They're both white tight ends and they both are relatively fast and athletic and can block well. But those are all the reasons to compare him to George Kittle because he excels at all those things. So keep that in mind. Uh, but as far as Kelsey, if you have Kelsey, I'm really sorry for you. You should have listened to my advice of not taking anyone not named Justin Jefferson before any other six running backs I mentioned. I mean, I did lay it out for you. It's not like I predicted Kelsey would be injured, but by and large, when you practice good, healthy habits, good things tend to happen. The healthy habit was to take one of the six running backs I mentioned before any skill position player, unless his name was Justin Jefferson. If you did not follow my advice, now is a great time to jump on the recovery train with me. I'll get you out of this. Don't worry. But if you do have Kelsey, it's going to be a long year for you. I mean, knee injuries, especially to a tight end, are tough. And to have one before the season even fucking starts, that's a disaster. Uh, he could be. A, this could be a whole season thing. This could be a couple weeks. This could be a blip. Who knows? And the Chiefs are trying to win a Super Bowl. So don't think they have your fantasy interests in mind. I do, not them. Speaking of tight ends that are probably going to be plagued with injury all year, my God, George Kittle. This one sucks. Uh, I love Kittle. I'm a Niners fan. So I actually drafted Kittle in one of my leagues. He was lingering, so I picked him up. Kittle said this was going to be his best season to date because this was the healthiest he's ever been in the offseason. He was literally recovering almost nothing, which was great news. And now it looks like he has groin trouble before the season starts. Keep your eye on Kittle. I love the dude to death, but he is very injury prone. Um, I would definitely ride that waiver wire each week just in case he has to miss a game or two, you know, just to, just to rest. It wouldn't surprise me if that happens. So Conklin and Dolkic and, and Laporta are great replacements. If you have Kittle and then one more guy that is going to be injury prone all year, just while we're talking about this. And I mentioned this in the first episode, but Tua, I was so against Tua from the start. And it's it's nothing against the guy. I like the guy. I think he's a fine quarterback. And I think that coach is super cool. And I think it's a really high-powered offense. But God almighty, as a doctor, I cannot, in good conscience, ever give you advice to play a man as fragile as Tua. It's like my grandpa getting suited up in pads. Like, the second that guy falls down, he turns... He, he, the second that guy falls and hits the ground, he will become a clinical vegetable. Like, fuck football. He will never walk upright again. How is this man allowed to play in the NFL? I don't know. Do not deal with that. I, if you have to, uh, like, okay, play him until he gets hurt, until he can't walk again. What's the strategy there? Then we'll figure it out. Okay. Your life. Um, but yeah, those are the injury-prone guys I want to talk about. But but here we are. This is the last uh, out-of-ordinary episode of Dr. PPR uh, before the season starts, before we get into our regular weekly cadence. That's right, folks, because we are now on Apple Podcasts. You can listen to Dr. PPR with me, Henry Markin, anywhere, anytime. Just know that I will be pumping out three shows a week, and I'm not going to stop. That's that's the cadence. If you're a part of this payment insurance, it doesn't matter. We accept all insurances. It, it, your healthcare coverage is universal, and uh, and I got you. So on every Monday, we're gonna do a recap, pretty much a full lobotomy of everything that I talked about. Whether there's any instances of malpractice, if I got something wrong, we're gonna talk about that. Usually there's not because I'm a doctor and I'm usually right. And we're going to break down the whole week in terms of fantasy, go over what I said to do, what not to do, and see if it lines up. Right? We're going to measure my success rate as a doctor. Usually the patients survive. Tuesdays, we're going to talk about my prescriptions. These are the do's and don'ts of the week to come. Who to start, who to sit, who to say ta-ta, 
who to pick up off the waiver wire because they're hot before they're not available. These are prescriptions. Do them. They are doctor's orders as well. If I say doctor's orders, you fucking do it because I want to keep your team alive, right? If, if, you, if you're getting treated for something and I give you treatment and you take it, that's because I'm not like playing a practical joke on you. You should do that so you don't die. That's what a doctor's order is. Mainly it's going to be prescriptions on Tuesdays, but sometimes there's a doctor's order. You'll catch on. And then finally, Friday. Friday is where we're going to talk a little bit about my favorite gambling locks and player props and any sort of uh, action you want to take part in. Guys, I'm, I'm a doctor, not a cop. I mean, this medical school debt is going to pay for itself. I love to gamble. And I think you should get into it as well if you're trying to pay some rent. Uh, you'll be surprised how successful you can be with simple little things. I'm not trying to get you to gamble. Just, you know, why not? It's fun. Uh, but yeah, Monday recaps, Tuesday prescriptions, Friday gamblings. Uh, and on that note, let's talk about some teams and games that I like for this week, right? Because there's there's a lot to dissect here. So first things first, let's just talk about the Lions and the Chiefs. Yeah, the big one. Listen, I'm 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 gonna cut right to the chase. I I, I don't think you need to get too cute here. I think the fact of the matter is Dan Campbell's a freak. And that guy has electrified his entire clubhouse and organization. They will fight tooth and nail for him. I mean, the guy wanted to have a live lion chained up on the sidelines. I mean, this guy, this guy's a horse in human form. I fucking love it. They fight to the end and they cover spreads. I think the Chiefs spread right now, I think it was like five and a half. That's bloated. I mean, anything above four. This is going to be a close game. Like the Chiefs are probably going to win, but if they don't, at least you get the cover from the Lions. You don't need to go cuteness overload on us. You don't have to fully dive in on this team. The Lions may win, but they may not, but I think it's going to be close. They're going to Kansas City. It's just, just play what's safe. It's just chicken and rice. Take the Lions spread, call it. Don't get too cute. Okay, now... Here are the other games I really like. And you could do whatever you want. You could bet on your favorite team. You could bet on your least favorite team. You could fade teams. I'm just going to tell you as a doctor, if I were to bet, which I am, these are the games I'm doing. So you could follow this doctor into battle. The first one is Baltimore. I really love Baltimore. Money line spread. If you're in a survivor pool, take Baltimore to win. If you want Baltimore, just the just the spread, I think it's minus 10 against Houston. I love it. Baltimore generally wins their home openers, not just winning, but handedly. In fact, it, like I think the last six years, they've I think they're like five and one on home openers, and most of their games are over two scores. They're well prepared. John Harbaugh is running a tight ship over there. These guys are always juiced. Plus they're playing a Houston team that's young, new, and totally inexperienced. Like, and that's just some bedside manner for that. They're not very good. They're going to get fucking destroyed, but it's easier to say that they're super young and new. So yeah, I like Baltimore spread. Take them. <clears throat> uh, another game I really like is in the Minnesota Tampa Bay situation, right? Listen, you can say what you want about Kirk Cousins. The guy, the guy's kind of vanilla, right? They did the quarterback show on him. He's supposed to be this super cool guy that's kind of dorky. You like that? I like that. He wears the chains, whatever. Whatever your take is on him as a dude or even as a quarterback, it's besides the point. They're playing against Baker Mayfield's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't know if you saw the quarterback room in Tampa Bay. It's not good. It's horrible. Okay. Baker Mayfield needs an optometrist, first of all. And the GM needs a psycho evaluation for putting that quarterback room together. I mean, some of the passes that Mayfield and Trask were throwing, I mean, who are they throwing to? It's one on zero. They're airmailing simple slant routes. I, I, I don't think five and a half points is a super big mountain to climb for Minnesota, especially with a guy like Justin Jefferson and I bet you they have something to say this year. I bet you this is, this is kind of the, the last shot Kirk cousins really has to make some noise and to 
fully erase the meme surrounding his name as being a mid quarterback. I think this is his shot. And I think he knows it too. I don't know what Baker knows. I uh, I feel like Baker's just pulling a fast one on us. Just be like, gotcha. You guys thought I was a quarterback. I am not like, I, I, I just don't buy Baker at all. And I'm really not buying the strategy in Tampa Bay. So Minnesota minus five and a half 49ers minus two and a half against the Steelers. This is an easy pick Bosa or not. God, please Bosa sign. I'm a Niners fan, but they're trying to win a Super Bowl. Right. And this team is so talented. I I don't think that the second year Kenny Pickett led squad is gonna throw too many surprises we're not ready for. I think it'll probably be a closer game than people think, but can the Niners win by a field goal? Will it go to overtime and they win by a field goal? Maybe. But a win's a win and a cover's a cover. And I think Shanahan's a great coach, not just a good coach. And as everybody knows, good coaches win, but great coaches they cover. So Love that. And lastly, oh no, I'm sorry. I got one more team I want to talk about. Then we'll get into the the big, the big do not, doctor's orders do not. But one more team that I really, really like is Washington. Washington is playing Arizona. Okay. Right now the spread is Washington minus seven. Okay. Um, I just want to I just want to make this perfectly clear that it, it it doesn't it doesn't really matter who Arizona is playing going going forward right it, whether you're betting a betting person or not just understand if you see if you see the bird logo if you see the Cardinals that means that means fly away this Cardinals team is about to take a 17 week kneel in an attempt to tank for Caleb Williams. I don't know if you've seen this coach. It's actually just Murr from Impractical Jokers. Their team meetings are just episodes of The Office, and every player is just Jim. It's the cringiest nightmare I've ever seen. Him trying to get people fired up. Yeah, no, it's just it's just Michael Scott and a different actor. <laughs> like, that's exactly what it is. Fade the Cardinals. I don't care if you bet. I don't care if you're a shark. This is about to be a catastrophic season. Fade the Cardinals with every cell in your body, whether you are new to betting or you've been betting a long time. This is a doctor's order. If you see the Cardinals are playing a team, if they're playing somebody, pick the other team. It doesn't even fucking matter who they're playing. Just pick, it's just you will, you'll have great success all year. So to parlay that, they're playing Washington. Okay, the spread is Washington minus seven. Already, Washington's going to win. You think head coach Ron Rivera, who beat cancer, is going to let this squid head coach Michael Scott wannabe do anything against one of the best defenses in football? No. Absolutely fucking not. So, with every cell in your body, fade the red Birds. You see the Cardinals logo? That means no other team. Yes, Washington has a rookie quarterback, Sam Howell, leading the charge. Sam Howell, fifth and Powell, a wet towel. It doesn't matter. Riverboat Ron beat cancer. He's not going to lose to the Arizona Cardinals. End of story. And on that note, that's kind of all I got today, folks. Uh, I like to keep these episodes short. You know, we're going to do three a week. I have a lot of patience, but I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? So I, I uh, it's a horrible joke. So I, I really want to keep these episodes short. Uh, again, every Monday, I'm going to do a recap. Every Tuesday, it's going to be my prescriptions. And then every Friday are betting locks. But all these shows are available anytime on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or you can watch these live on nofilter.net. You can always DM No Filter Network on Instagram or TikTok or me, HS Markin, any fantasy advice. I will open it up on the actual platform right here. The chat room is always open. If you want to knock, you can always do that too. If you're listening to these live, the knock feature, No Filter Network is available. You can come in, ask me a question. It could be my office hours. Uh, the comments are always there. 
there's a lot you can do with the interactivity of no filter network on the live part. But if you have any sort of questions after the fact, always DM no filter network. I run the accounts. So Dr. PPR will answer timely. Uh, but that's it for this week, folks. Uh, next week we start the three show cadence. Um, but until then, you know, eat your vegetables, get plenty of rest and, uh, trust your doctor always. This is Dr. PPR and we will see you next week. Have a great start to your fantasy football season.